What's up everybody, it's Hunter Oakley here, back with another video of dive school done and in the books. Um, so if you're not familiar with what I'm doing, I'm doing weekly like recaps on kind of how my schooling's going at the Divers Institute of Technology in Seattle. Um, so if you haven't seen those prior videos, go check them out. Um, so last week, like I said, um, was a lot of PowerPoints, a lot of notes, a lot of tests. Anyways, but I, I had a feeling that this week was going to be a lot better, a lot more hands-on than it was. So Monday, the whole class of mine was split up into two groups. Um, on Monday and Tuesday, we were doing chamber runs, and the other class was doing CPR courses, and then vice versa, Wednesday, Thursday, I did the CPR courses. Anyways, um, so the beginning of Monday started off, our half of the class was um, going over how to run the chamber, um, the decompression chamber, if you're not familiar with what that is. Um, it's a chamber that gets pressed, pressurized down to a certain depth, but it's not really getting pressurized in the water. It's getting pressurized by air around it. Um, so that gets pressurized by two different things. Mostly there's a compressor that does it but then there's backup um, high pressure banks that um, are there in case something happens to the compressor. Um, so anyways, we do like a, a very extensive uh, setup on it to make sure everything's in line, everything's working, there's no leaks, nothing. Um, and then we got to run the chamber ourselves. The instructor showed us how to do it several times and then each and every one of us got to run it ourselves, but it was a dry run. So there wasn't actually anybody in the chamber for the first time that we're running it, obviously, um, for safety reasons. And so everyone, um, the way it's kind of done, there's one person pressurizing the chamber down to the depth and they're trying to keep it at a certain um, feet per minute, which is a certain time and depth. And so there's two timers there's a timer and then there's a backup timer standing behind them kind of yelling in their ear telling them if they're going too fast or too slow on the descent also on the ascent um and then there's people doing charts also kind of we we're just doing this kind of as a whole team which was cool to see everyone come together and see what their kind of parts are and we kind of rotated so, so while one person's doing the chamber other people get experience running the timers vice versa, we kind of just did a big circle. The, um, here's kind of an example of how a, um, a dry run in the chamber is charted. This is what the chart looks like, and then we fill it out as they go. And then down here is the total decompression time. Uh, well, I can't really see it, but total decompression time, total time of dive, all that. Um, Anyways, you guys don't need to know all that, but um, it's pretty interesting to look back, especially if you were actually on the dive. Um, and we're gonna be doing those every single time we dive, so we really need to know how to do them. Um, so we did that. I'll put a few, like a little time lapse and a picture of the chamber on here in a second, because um, I got a couple pictures and time lapse of us in it. Anyways, um, what else? So yeah, we did that. We did a bunch of dry runs. And then after the lunch, the first two groups, we did two groups of four that went in there. Uh, maybe the first group was three. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyways, um, so I was the second group to get put in. The first group went good. Everything was good. Then the second group got in. It was me and three other guys um, did it. Everything was fine. Um, so that's kind of how that day ended. We, um, oh, and then also we did a very extensive shutdown cycle. Um, so you have to shut down everything. You can't just leave the compressor and everything on overnight. So you have to make sure um, all that's done properly. And the next morning we came in, did the same thing. Um, you go over all these sheets um, and to make sure you don't miss anything on the setup set up the um, low pressure compressor, set up the high pressure um, banks, set up the oxygen. Um, then the last group got to go in, did a couple dry runs just to keep it fresh in our mind. And then the last group went in 
everything went good. So all of us had had a chance in my half of the group had a chance to be in the chamber within like the first day and first couple hours of the next day. Then we kind of just um, did a couple of other. I actually got to go in it again the second day um, just to get more time. I mean, we, we just it's one one of those things where the more time you get on it, the more time you're doing charts, the more time you're pressing it down, the better you're going to get at it. So we kind of just kept doing those. Um, if someone wasn't super comfortable, we would do it just a quick dry run um, just to recap everything and make sure that they're cool and, and uh, good to go. And so we did that for the rest of the day, um, did the shutdown cycle again, and then our half the group on Wednesday went into the classroom and we started on um, CPR courses. It's done through a, a deal called DAN. It's the Divers Alert, Alert Network. It's um, a big network that's worldwide for divers. Um, you can also get like insurance and stuff through them if you're like a freelance uh, worker that works by yourself if you're not working for a company and all, they already have their own insurance. Or even recreational divers um, get insurance through Dan, which is a pretty good idea if you're uh, diving by yourself. Well, not by yourself, but not um, through a company um, and something were to go wrong. I mean, generally you're out on a boat somewhere far away. If, if something really were to go wrong, super bad, um, you would need Coast Guard to either fly you out of there or it would be a big expensive ordeal. So insurance while diving actually isn't a bad idea ever. <laughs> Um, so anyways, but that's what the course was um, taught through. It's Dan, it's a Dan um, course. So Wednesday was a lot more notes than on Thursday, but so we did a lot of notes on that, made sure everything squared away and we knew everything. Then Thursday we did a lot more hands-on on how to do CPR. A lot of uh, guys in the class had done it prior, but a couple things have changed and you have to read, you have to renew this um, uh, certification every two years if you want to actually stay in the, the, the um, industry because um, a lot of companies are looking for it um, but some things do change frequent like little tweaks change every few years so they'll bring you in or um, generally Dan will notify you and say hey we changed this blah 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 anyways um, so we did a lot more hands-on stuff on uh, CPR and stuff, obviously because of like COVID and stuff. <laughs> Couldn't do mouth to mouth. Well, we wouldn't do mouth to mouth anyways, but that's kind of out of the question when it comes to like something in the real world, I guess. I don't know. I feel like if something really were to go wrong with one of my family members or something, I definitely would minister mouth to mouth because I'm not going to just sit there and watch them die. Anyways. Um, so yeah, we did a lot more hands-on CPR and stuff like that. Also, um, how to treat different types of wounds, puncture wounds, gouges, slices, everything. How to apply a tourniquet. Um, pretty much, yeah, a lot of stuff, um, which was pretty cool. So we got that certification. And then um, at the end of that day, we finished our final. I don't know how we did on it because it was on the, at the end of the day Thursday. So I'm going to find that out tomorrow. Um, and then, oh, after we got pressurized down, that's kind of like our, uh, our, our go green, green light to diving in the next week. We're not diving this week, upcoming week, but the week after it's kind of our green light to say, yeah, he's allowed to go down. He's been down, pressurized down to 60 feet. Everything was good. Um, because it technically is a dive, even though you're not in the water. Um, so we got our um, DCBC log books, which is um, awesome. Stoked to get that. You don't get that until you get pressurized down to 60 feet in the chamber to prove that um, you can do it. Anyways, um, so we got that. Did the dive charts. Anyways, oh, I also got my gear. I'm going to do another video on my gear because um, I feel like it should be a separate video, not just part of this one. Um, so I'll do that after this. Um, also, I totally forgot to get back to you guys on the knots from last week. Um, I We still haven't technically gone over all of them, but I've talked with a couple of instructors floating around campus and they said that I was doing all those knots properly. So those knots are good and good to go. So you don't have to worry that I didn't teach you a wrong knot. Um, 
So yeah, that seems to be everything that we've done this week. Thanks a lot for uh, tuning in for week four. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you at the dive gear review. Well, not really a review. I'm just going over everything I got. But thanks again. We'll see you.